I thought was an over the until all the outside agendas and propaganda came in. And hear this. Well, one of the things they told me was that um, he brought, we were, was at the house one night, and uh, we, were told, we were talking, and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I had pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote. You know, and he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want me, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know. And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you want to know why? He said, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, we couldn't tax half the population before Women's Lib. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. Which it breaks up the family. The kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two prim the primary reasons for women's love, which, which I thought up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was an evil event. Until Shalom, Kohlaimla, Yehovah, Hashem Yehovah Shai, Hashem Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yehovah, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yehovah Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, woe unto the wicked. So whenever the Bible talks about woe, it's giving a warning of destruction to come. So now that the wicked has been exposed, and in this particular video interview, that's Aaron Russo. And he sat down with Nick Rockefeller. Now the Rockefellers are trying to say that the interview never happened. It's all theory. That's a lie. Now, most of these videos have been taken down including the interview between Nick Rockefeller and Aaron Russo, which gives us insight into a hidden agenda to break up families and to push a concept called creeping socialism. So their goal was to get both parents out of the household where the values or the traditional family values were no longer being taught in the home. The father was out working. Now the mother was out of the home where they could tax both the mother and the father. And that left a huge vacuum where the state would begin to indoctrinate the children with the rainbow coalition agenda. And the doctrine of the new age, the new age agenda, the new age religion, which inherently is pagan, paganism, witchcraft, multiple gods. So the way they put this thing together was very sinister, but brilliant at the same time. And also, Nick Rockefeller talked about talked about tagging and tracking the population through an electronic digital means. So a lot came out of that interview between Nick Rockefeller and Aaron Russo. So we're going to go into it. This is Aaron Russo, known for producing the movie Trading Places, which is spiritual in itself because it talks about Jacob 
assuming control of the world and taking down the Dukes, the Dukes of Edom, if you watch that movie. These people still call themselves the Dukes today, the noble global elites of the house of Esau, Edom. Well, that's Aaron Russo. And all of a sudden, this man mysteriously dropped dead. I think they said he died of cancer. I have to look it up. But he had mysterious circumstances surrounding his death, so to speak. Oh, by the way, they weaponize our women against us through feminism and women's liberation telling the women, basically brain sodomizing our women, saying you're equal to the man, you're above the man, you can do better than the man, you don't need a man. The global international elites push this agenda to divide the family household and destroy the family traditional unit. And now they've pretty much had their way. Look at the state and condition of America's youth. The young men got pants falling off their behind. The young women are prostitutes on social media, prostituting themselves and advertising their bodies across the Internet. So the global elites have cunningly pushed creeping socialism and a communistic indoctrination, which is ultimate control over the population and a government indoctrination program, hidden agendas that they've been able to push. So Gloria Steinem is a CIA agent that was commissioned to help push women's liberation. Right here, Gloria Steinem. And there's a dumb black baboon wearing an afro looking like a damn wildebeest with a perm that was standing beside her holding up her fist next to Gloria Steinem. A wildebeest without a perm, excuse me. See, Gloria Steinem, C I. A, they probably took it down. Yeah, it's not showing it. But anyway, there's a book that came out exposing that agenda as well. And I can't remember the name of the so-called black woman, Eve, standing next to her with her fist pumped up. Let's go here to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. So this is prescriptive, pre-written policies backed by a hidden sinister agenda driven by the global elites to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. So the families are robbed, stripped bare. The widows are the women that are becoming praised to this agenda, victims, ultimately, affecting the children and the subsequent generations behind them that have a rainbow coalition indoctrination and a new age religious belief that's been ingrained into their mind. Verse 3, And what will ye do in the day of visitation and in the day of desolation which shall come from far. To whom will ye flee for help 
and where will ye leave your glory? So they got to pay for this. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. Nothing. So the men of the Lord have been sounding the alarm and blowing the trumpet, exposing these new world order belief systems, this paganism, this rainbow federation indoctrination agendas. But for the most part, has fallen on deaf ears. But a remnant have obtained this wise counsel. And the rest, which is the majority of the world, are being blinded in their pride and in their disbelief. Let's go to Lamentations 3. Lamentations 3, verse 31. For the Lord will not cast us off forever. I'm going to read that again. So the fact that we're waking up to our nationality and this glorious gospel, the light of the Lord's wisdom, this is a telltale sign that the Lord is having mercy on Jacob. Let's read that again. Lamentations 3, verse 31. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. So the Lord is going to punish the wicked oppressors. And yet he's going to have mercy on the remnant of the house of Jacob. Let's close out here. We're going to go to Job chapter 34. The book of Job chapter 34 verse 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. Who's going to pass away? Right at the height of their kingdom, when they are on the brink of crowning their global enterprise, their new world order, a success. Old man Sleazy E, the rich man, is going to pass away. Let's go to Psalms 37. Remember where it's at. Right here. Psalms 37, verse 35. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself. Like a green bay tree, yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. So the wicked is the global elites, the Edomites, Esau, Edom. Let's go to the rich man, poor man parable. So the rich man is going to pass away. Esau, the global elites, Job 9 and 24 says, The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. See, let's go to Luke 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So the poor man is Jacob. The meek shall inherit the earth. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. And it came to pass that the beggar died 
and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lit up his eyes, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Lazarus means God will help us. So the Most High is going to raise up to raise up Jacob by the angels. So the chariots of the Lord are going to come in the last days. Verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. So they are going to go into torment. They're going to be slaves working in the hot field, getting that little dipping cup to drink water, just like on the movie Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. They're going to be in the cotton field, slavery, a.k.a. hell on earth. Let's go back. So they're going to pass away the old world, the old kingdom, under old man Sleazy E. See, let's go back to Job 34, verse 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. So the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. Verse 21, for his eyes are upon the ways of bed, and he seeth all his goings. So their works are not hid from the eyes of the Lord. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and he's going to destroy it from off the face of the earth. So that sinful kingdom that's in the crosshairs of the Lord's wrath and fury is the daughter of Babylon, the last standing kingdom under Edom, which is America. That's the stronghold of the strong man, Basra. Job 34 and 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. So even in their secret chambers, on their beds, the global elites are working a new world order agenda. The workers of iniquity, the international bankers, the Rothschilds, the Bilderberg Group, the Club of Rome, the Trilateral Commission. Light is being shed on their agendas. Job 34, verse 23. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. Jacob is going to be set up. The so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. And the Edomites are going to go into the cotton field. Slavery. Job 34, verse 25. Therefore, he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them, in the night so that they are destroyed. So they're going to think themselves to be in a good case. Right when they're getting ready to claim that their enterprise of achieving their new order of the ages has been accomplished, 
the Lord is going to cast the fury of his wrath upon them. He's going to initiate a nuclear holocaust. Don't forget the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, can turn these nuclear launch sites on and off at their will. So these angels can turn on these nuclear launch missile sites. And this is a big concern for the U.S. government and the Pentagon. Job 34 verse 25. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others. That is a global desolation that's coming upon the earth. Read Zephaniah 3 and 8. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others. Job 34 and 27. Because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. They forsook the ordinances of the Most High. That's why the Bible says unto the wicked, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? So they hate the ways of the Most High. They are a rejected people. When you read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and verse 17, they hate the ways of the heavenly father. They hate his anointed ones, Jacob. They hate his name. They don't even say his name. They, sh they say Hashem, which is the name Hashem. Job 34 and 27. Because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. So that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him. And he heareth the cry of the afflicted. That's what the Israelites are doing right now. Crying unto our power. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. Job 34 and 29. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only. So when the Lord moves, there is no impeding his will, his power. Spiritual intervention is going to come upon the earth and destruction upon the heads of the wicked. Job 34, verse 20. Job 34, verse 30. That the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. So their rulership over the earth is but for a moment, but in the night as a thief, Shai is going to blow out their candle, take them down from being the light of the world, the beacon of light or leaders over the earth. That's why Lady Liberty, which is a transformer wearing a damn crown, is holding up a light torch, represents being the beacon of light and wisdom over the earth, over the kings of the earth. So they've used Edomite supremacist tyranny, women's liberation and feminism to destroy the earth. Also, creeping socialism, a complete government takedown and control over the population, mixed in with a new age agenda, paganism. 
Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekwakadash, Barakatham. Woe to the wicked. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yesharala and the Bad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.